The new film Suicide Squad, Hell to Pay, is finally out. And I've got to say, this is not what I was expecting at all. After the letdown of the live action film, I wasn't too excited for this new film. But I have to say, it's a lot better than the live action film was. Though, admittedly, that isn't actually saying much. The film has a very simple premise. The Suicide Squad are after a get out of hell free card. And so are two different supervillain teams, one that is led by Vandal Savage and another that is led by the Reverse Flash. And all of them fight a lot to get hold of it, killing a lot of the characters on both sides. And that's actually an important thing I do have to say, it's a lot more violent than I was expecting. With its R rating there is some very graphic violence, and it's probably the most violent DC film they've ever made, at least in the animation. The film also seems to be going in the style of Quentin Tarantino at times, using a film filter to make it look like his films do. They also use similar titles and effects as Quentin Tarantino's films use. Now that's not a bad thing, it does in a way add to the fun. And though there is a lot of gore, I do have to say that that is in keeping with the Suicide Squad comic book series. It's quite a gory and bloody book. This film also is not just another DC animated film. DC does release a lot of them now, so they can end up getting a bit generic, especially the ones where Damian Wayne's character is learning the exact same lesson every time he's in the film. And though those films aren't necessarily bad, it is good to be moving away from doing the same story. And this film has a much more original plot and a hell of a lot more information in it than the normal New 52 movies do. In fact, I'd say it's an essential watch. It even links into the film Justice League Flashpoint, which is the film that started the New 52 universe. As The Flash made the New 52 universe, when he screwed up time and made it all terrible, and then tried to put it back together, but there were a few changes which resulted in the New 52. And this film features the reverse Flash from that film, even though he's dead. It's complicated, and it's kind of explained in the film. They essentially just say it's because of the speed force, that even though he's dead, he's able to be there for a short time. And in that moment, that very infinitesimal split second before death, I drew the speed force into me with every ounce of willpower I had left. But it is great to see the films linked in together. And as the reverse Flash is dead, slash dying, he of course wants to get hold of the get out of hell free card so that he can bypass hell and go straight to heaven. Amanda Waller is also dying. It's not really said what from, but it looks like a brain tumor. So she also wants the card for the same reason. I run the outfit the way I want, and I want that card, Deadshot. And Vandal Savage wants the card because in this version, though he is still immortal, he doesn't heal as well, and he can be killed by mortal injury. The reason they are all trying to get hold of the card, of course, is that it only works once. So once it's been used, the others won't be able to get into heaven with it. The film also features a lot of DC characters, some of which are quite minor. It also kills a lot of them too, which is quite surprising as so many die. But again, that is in keeping with the Suicide Squad comic. It's kind of like a Game of Thrones version of comics. And I must say that with the characters, I did have my doubts with Christian Slater playing Deadshot. Just saving on the dry cleaning. But after watching him, I have to say that this is the best portrayal of Deadshot I have ever seen. Way better than Will Smith's version. And the other comic book characters stick well to their comic book roots. Though bizarrely, Harley Quinn is barely in the movie. I thought that she'd have a larger role in the film, as she's so famous at the moment. But she's actually a minor character in the film, which is rather surprising. But with her getting her own show, maybe they're trying to save her for that. It's also the first of the new 52 movies that doesn't feature Batman or the Bat family in some way, which is refreshing. I do like the Batman films, but I'm hoping they'll do more films of the other, lesser known DC characters, rather than just focusing on the major players. There is also a lot of sexual references and jokes in this film. But of all the junk, the thing that Nabu cherished the absolute most was the smallest. It's a bit much at times, and to be honest, some of the sex and violence does seem unnecessary, and just in there for shock factor, and of course to justify the R rating. An example of this is with Scandal Savage. Scandal Savage is the daughter of Vandal Savage. She's a lesbian and in a relationship with Knockout. And in one scene, her girlfriend Knockout is getting out of a pool and she's naked. Now, there's not really any need to see much of her as she gets out, but if you freeze the movie at just the right point, as I have, you can clearly see one of her boobs. I've put a hedgehog over it in this video, as this channel is mainly PG for the most part. But I assure you, it is in the film. 
And it's moments like this that are just really unnecessary. They don't really take away from the film, but they seem to be just added for shock value. And it's because of this that I have to say that this is without a doubt the most graphically violent and sexual DC animated film that has been made to date. Now as I said a lot happens in the film and it does have rewatch value, something a lot of the new DC animated films don't have. You watch them once and then you kind of forget about them sometimes. Some of them can be watched several times, but not all of them. And with this film there is most likely something you'll have missed the first watch through that you'll catch on the second time round, which always makes it more fun to rewatch these films. And that's my basic review. It's graphically violent and sexual in places, including a visit to the strip club. But the film itself is very well made, the characters are very accurate. The plot is simple, but it's done well, and the fight scenes are absolutely excellent. So if you're okay with graphic violence and the occasional bit of slight nudity, then you'll enjoy this film, as it's very entertaining. And if you like the Suicide Squad comic book, then you'll definitely like this, as it's a much more faithful adaption of the series than the live action movie was. It captures the style and tone of the comic perfectly. And as I'm a big fan of the comic book series, I fully recommend watching this. And be sure to let us know what you thought of the film in the comments. Now I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those of you who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. Patreon is a crowdfunding site that is helping us to bring you more videos each week and to raise funds for adapting comic book stories into short animated films. If you're interested in donating or just want to find out more, a link is in this video's description. And as always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment.